Hey everybody, this is Kit from Kit's Cars. We're gonna go through a week of car news uh, for the week ending July 9th. So it was a short week today. A lot of the uh, US had the fifth off to help celebrate the fourth, uh, or at least recover there from, but we got a solid bunch of uh, car news this week. Uh, first of all was the beautiful Lotus Amira. Uh, Lotus announced that they'll be replacing the Evora with a new car that's um, based on the same chassis with uh, not a whole lot of parts except for the motor uh, retained. It's a beautiful car. I'm really excited for this. And I was so excited. I went down and put a deposit on one. So excited to receive that in a year. BMW followed this announcement of a beautiful car with the not so good looking 2 Series announcement. The 2022 2 Series has got some of the right ingredients like box flares and an inline turbo six and no hybrid, but it's not a very attractive car, unfortunately. Uh, the M240i, which is the sportiest version, is actually as large as an E90 sedan, um, which is a three series uh, from two generations ago. And it weighs almost 3,900 pounds in X-Drive form. Sigh. Well, anyway, hopefully there's other better news. Uh, Lamborghini announced the 780-4 Ultime, which is the final edition of the Aventador. This is significant because this will uh, be Lamborghini's last, uh, well, I guess volume V12 powered car, um, at least purely V12. Lamborghini is expected to go hybrid uh, as are a bunch of other cars. This has been sort of a disturbing trend in the industry that uh, we're moving away from naturally aspirated and non-hybridized uh, cars uh, to those powered by hybrid drivetrains. What's wrong with a hybrid drivetrain? Well, nothing if they're tuned right, but you have the weight of batteries, you have the complexity of trying to blend an electric and gasoline uh, power curve and the complexity of uh, the just making them work together. So we'll see how this uh, ends up. But today the uh, Vendador Ultima is the last of the natural aspirated V12s from Lamborghini. Stellantis uh, and their sub-brands Dodge announced a muscle car that will be electric in 2024. Eh, not sure this is going to be all that interesting, but uh, their Stellantis has rolled out uh, corporate slogans for each of their brands um, for electrification. So, And they've announced a $35 billion investment in electrification. So this will produce more battery-powered cars. We'll see how that goes. Uh, there's, they'll be later to market with all electrics, although certainly they've got some experience. Uh, the Fiat 500e was the first electric car I ever owned. And um, the only reason I owned it was it was super cheap, <laughs> but uh, we'll see. I mean, electric cars uh, do have the advantage of the instant torque and throttle response, um, usually at the expense of heavier weight. Um, but you know, we'll see how, how well Dodge can turn that into a uh, actual fun to drive car. And in other automotive news, the EU has uh, announced the fines that they've levied against um, VW and BMW after Dieselgate. So VW got caught uh, cheating on the diesel emissions tests. And in the wake of that, there was another news article that came out or news piece that came out that the EU was investigating uh, several manufacturers for antitrust measures. So the, uh, the allegations were that the manufacturers got together and limited the development of um, uh, selective catalytic reduction technology, which treats the nitrous oxide emissions using uh, the AdBlue, which is a urea-based fluid. So um, manufacturers didn't want to develop these uh, systems. Um, VW and BMW were both uh, named in these fines. Uh, Mercedes actually managed to be uh, to get rid of their fines by being a whistleblower on the other two. So I'm sure that the uh, Mercedes brass is uh, hiding out and not wanting to be in public places with VW and BMW right now. BMW is paying 373 million euros. VW is paying 502 million euros. It's a big, pretty big chunk, but at the end of the day, uh, the markets actually reacted positively to this news 
raising the market cap of both companies by way more than the fines. BMW is up almost 4% today and VW's uh, stock is up almost 6%. I'm not sure that those uh, fines are gonna have all that much effect in that case, given the size, but we'll see. The other interesting thing that uh, happened this week are used car prices are finally starting to level out. Uh, the used car market has been absolutely crazy for the past six months. I know you, you've probably seen some comments from me uh, about used car values and car demand is up because the supply chains have been disrupted by a lot of the chip shortages. Those chip shortages are, are scheduled to be, or hopefully going to be easing up over the next uh, two quarters. And as a result, um, directly or indirectly, the used car market has finally seen uh, a bit of a, de of a uh, decline. So the, the graph that I have here is from Mannheim. Mannheim publishes a used vehicle value index, which it tracks the wholesale price of cars. Mannheim does um, over time. And uh, this index is adjusted to cover the entire market. So it's not necessarily representative of a single either vertical or brand or genre, but captures just what ha what's happening in general with used cars. It's been pretty interesting. The way this works is that Mannheim has been tracking this since January 1995, and pricing in January 1995 is uh, computed to be 100. Uh, based on the Mannheim market report that uh, in June 2021, we saw the first uh, decline we've seen in the past six months after an extremely sharp um, uptick in used car pricing. Likely this is due to supply chains getting a little bit better, but uh, Used cars are up 34.3% from just a year ago, which is crazy. That said, uh, in June, we saw a decrease of about 1%. The first decrease uh, we've seen, like I said, in six months, and it really doesn't seem to change the actual shape of the curve that much, but it is the first leveling of this we've seen. Likely, uh, both new and used cars will continue to be inflated for at least the next six months, but I'd certainly predict that once the new car supply has caught up, which should happen in, you know, probably in Q4 or Q1 of next year, uh, used car prices will follow a similar trajectory. Now, the real question is, well, how will this affect investment grade vehicles? Because uh, the market, the used car market in general really trickles into both uh, the models that are scarce and models that are available. And the scarcity it really affects the, uh, the high-end um, collector's market um, so we've seen a huge increase in a lot of uh, high-end cars as well, especially exotics and uh, classics. And we'll see we'll see how those uh, how those do in the future. But I strongly suspect that now is not a good time to invest in automotive um, automotive uh, assets unless you plan on holding them for a really long time. In other news, the Goodwood Festival of Speed is kicked off last Thursday. Uh, and I'll put a link in the description to uh, a video where you can see the launch of the Lotus Amira, and it's driven pretty slowly. Uh, the Aston Martin Valkyrie, which is pretty impressive sounding and looking. Uh, the Ferrari SF90 Spider, meh. And the Maserati MC20, meh. So that's the news for this week, uh, ending July 9th. Uh, we'll see you next week.